What is up YouTube? Today I'm bringing you guys part one of the 3-4 bear scheme. This is going to be a little more serious of a video as we really start diving into it. There's a lot of stuff that's going to be covered in this as well. For you guys wondering, this is the Miami Dolphins defense. You can also get this in the Jets as well. I believe the Ravens. Do not quote me on that. But I do know for a fact you can get this in Jets and you can get this in Miami. So 3-4 bear. Today we're going to talk a little bit about personnel, some things that you guys are, I, some recommendations I'm going to give you guys as well if you decide to run this 3-4 bear defense. And first off, the, there's a reason we chose the Ravens, and this is kind of as close as I can get to it as I'd like to run a Mutt team, with the exception of a, different, a few different changes I'd like to make to this. So with the Ravens, as we hop over to defense, our first notable person is going to be Marlon Humphrey. Now his superstar ability is man up. As we go over to his man coverage, <clears throat> it's going to be all the way over. There it is. You see right there, he's 90 man. And let's hop over. Let's go back all the way to agility. Agility is at 88. So essentially when we're looking for a corner, the first suggestion I'm going to give you guys is have a man up corner with at least 90 and 90 agility and 90 man. You really want him to be able to keep up with a wide receiver stride for stride. And as far as speed is concerned, not too shabby with 92 speed. We'll get into a little bit more about how you can play man coverage a little more aggressively and not get burned too badly with this man coverage. So if you guys can have a man up, that's going to be fantastic. He's going to be playing better man coverage when we put him into soft squats or just leave him in straight up man. So that's the first recommendation right there. The next recommendation is going to be, I wanted a free safety, is going to be a zoned out player. Earl Thomas has a zoned out ability and he's almost always going to be exclusively playing either a deep half or a middle third on one field, one side of the field or the other. Now as we hop into a little bit about users right here, let's just check out the safeties that they do have. We've got Tavon Young. That's going to be pretty good. 90 speed. 5 foot 9 is pretty darn short if I'm being completely honest. So let's check out Anthony Everett is a little bit better. 93 speed. Almost 6 foot. Realistically, when you're looking for a user, somebody like, oh, it's on the Patriots. Melifon Wu. He's 6 foot 4. Yeah, 6 foot 4 and 92 speed. That is God tier for a user. Quite literally, that is as good as you're going to come across for a user. We're not going to be using linebackers. We're strictly going to be sticking to our secondary, which is going to be corners and safety. So if you can have somebody that has at least 90 speed, preferably six foot higher, six foot tall or taller, if I can get that right, that's going to be your best bet. So that's another suggestion I have for you as far as your user. Zoned out for safety, man up. The next one. And this is kind of where the Chiefs are going to shine as we hop down to our defensive line. You'll notice that the Ravens, for you guys that use the Ravens, they don't have any kind of star players on their defensive line. Their defensive tackle is pretty solid at a 92 overall. But if you guys can have somebody like the Kansas City Chiefs where he has power move specialist, I want to say he has one more as well, where they can just absolutely dominate against a double team. That's going to be your best bet in generating pressure as we start dropping back into more of a coverage style defense as we play cover three, maybe a little bit of heat out of it as well. So this is a little bit about personnel. This is more of the boring stuff, but this is probably some of the most important stuff along with it as well. So let's go ahead and get into this a little bit. First off, I forgot one thing. We also need to talk about linebackers. I know this is going to be like, oh, kill me. I'm going to die. Ugh, why are you going over this, Meister? <clears throat> this is extremely important. Speed on the outside linebackers. You're going to notice the Ravens are pretty lackluster in speed. Let's just hop over to middle linebacker and see what they have. So we've got Board, 86 speed. We have whatever, he, however you pronounce his name, Patrick with 85 speed. Those two are going to be great for getting the outside rush. Your outside linebackers need to be your fastest linebackers you have on the team. Again, remember, you're not going to be using these guys about 90% of the time. We're going to be sending a lot of pressure, and so we need guys that are just fast to be able to get to the edge, get to the quarterback, and sack them. So speed is going to be dominant. 85 and higher is my big recommendation. Let's check out these left outside linebackers you can see right here. 84, doable, but again, the higher the speed, the better off you're going to be. All the guys, the middle linebackers, 
they don't really matter all too much. It's going to be the guys that you put out on the outside edge that are really going to be setting the tone. So remembering, we've got Patrick and we've got Board both having at least 85 speed. So we're going to go and uh, I think it's on, on what, on what, I don't know. You guys let me know in the comment section how you pronounce that. But we're going to go into 3-4 bear. For the audibles, for the most part, I'm not going to worry about too much. This is how we're going to keep it. You could switch pinch Mike O for pinch buck O. But we're almost always going to be coming out in the pinch buck O to begin with. Pinch Mike O, not as good because it just requires some more adjustments to get it to work. The one thing that I'm going to switch to is you could either have it as a Will Sam, a cover one hole, or Sam Mike. Don't do engage eight. When we get into run defense, we're going to be talking a little about QB one, cover one QB contain as well as this cover three. So again, this is why outside linebackers with speed are going to be crucial to be able to set the edge against the run and set the edge against the pass rush. So we're always going to be coming out in this pinch buck O, but first let's go ahead and get our, oops, our personnel all set. See so right here, we got to get Patrick out of that position. I don't know who McPhee is. doesn't really matter again. We're going to go ahead and put him right there because he has 85 speed. And then let's check, see who's right here. Okay, he's not right there. Where is this guy at? Da, 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 board, there he is. 86 speed board. Yeah, he's low overall. But again, we're worried primarily about speed. Now, as far as everybody else goes, Marlon Humphrey is somebody that you're going to need to be able to be flexible with. What I mean by that is you're going to be switching him according to where we think their best wide receiver is because you need to match your best corner with your best wide receiver. That's simply how it's going to work. A suggestion I can give for you guys, it's not available in practice mode, but below random play, if you go to coaching adjustments, you can switch. I can't remember the exact terminology they have behind it. I want to say it's like secondary corners, match corners by whatever or something like that. Match them by overall. So it puts your best overall corner against the best overall wide receiver. So that's just one less thing you guys got to worry about. The computer just automatically does it for you. You can also match by speed, match by height. There's a few others as well. So just go ahead and mess around with that. I really suggest just matching it by overall again. So then you don't have to worry about moving him around. It's just automatically done for you. Just leave it alone. So three, four bear. The only thing I do suggest is it's already done for us. But Earl Thomas or your zoned out player, be sure he's in at the free safety position. Don't put him down in the box because you're going to be using that. And it is a waste to have a zoned out player as a user because you can play just as good as a zoned out player can. So make sure your zoned out player is playing over the top and not in the box. As far as this corner goes, doesn't really matter. If you can have a good man covering safety or, or man covering corner, or somebody with high press and good zone, that's going to be fantastic. I want to say Mel Blunt is pretty good in zone. Deion Sanders is good, but he is, he's trash in press, so we're really going to want to avoid Deion Sanders altogether. Now, as far as your defensive tackle goes, make sure if you guys have power move specialists, you put in power move specialists at your defensive tackle. No questions. Do not ask. Do not do not even think about questioning it just do it because when you guys start when we start dropping into coverage playing a three-man rush you need somebody that can just push through these offensive linemen and get to the quarterback again chris jones with the kansas city chiefs fantastic for this particular formation but again the regs teams they lack some things and they have other things that others don't so michael pierce is going to be fine although he may not generate as much pass rush as chris jones so, as always, we're going to be coming out in this pinch buck O. And from here, we're just kind of going to audible between whatever we got. So, let's go ahead and pinch buck O. Talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing for setting up this blitz. How you guys can get it to come home. I've already talked about this, but since this is a defensive scheme, i got to bring it all together. So, I'm going to just go into a simple flood drive. The setup for this blitz is really, really easy if we don't get snapped. Into here right there. This is kind of where you need your manned up player to play the ball a little bit better. But as long as you don't get snapped like that, what the setup for this blitz is just a simple press. Blitz all linebackers, and when you press, sometimes you notice that those linebackers will shift inside. You may have to do it a third time. Oftentimes, twice is enough to get this linebacker, this linebacker, and that linebacker shifted in. I'm going to say right now, if that guy does not shift in, the odds are he was already pre shifted. In a more a little bit more compression, you can see right there. Bam, we scream. Oh, I thought he almost broke that sack. You can see right there, we scream, we get the sack. But 
Again, it's just simple blitz, all linebackers, press, and then QB contain. QB contain is more so focused towards those quarterbacks that have escape artists or fast break like Lamar Jackson, like Russell Wilson, like Deshaun Watson, Patrick Mahomes, Steve Young, Michael Vick, all those guys that have escape artists. A QB contain is primarily focused on them. If you're going against somebody that does not have an escape artist, you don't need to put QB contains out on the field. They're going nowhere. Tom Brady is not outrunning an 86 speed linebacker. Aaron Rodgers will not outrun an 86 speed linebacker. It's not going to work. So you guys do not have to worry about QB contain if you're going against a pocket passing style of QB. Again, if you're going against a scrambling one, you're definitely gonna wanna slap some contains out there. If they're a really good player, Good players, we know how to get outside of a contain. That's just how Madden 20 is, and it's something you're just gonna have to deal with. Again, just consistently send the pressure. This defense is heavily dependent upon getting pressure, especially if we're playing a man defense. We want two things to happen. Is one, we wanna force them into max protect, and two, we want the pressure to get home. So as I was talking about earlier, this guy right here, Clark, or whoever it is, is always going to be your user. It's always going to be the strong safety. To make it a little more clear, let's go ahead and odd one to cover three, and let's just baseline real fast. Come on, baseline. There we go. That's not baseline. It's always going to be this strong safety. Now I was talking about have a fast user. We're gonna go ahead and get Clark out of there because he's a straight up bum. He's he's just way too slow. I'm gonna actually go check real fast who is the fast user. So the user for this is going to be Averett. The strong safety is always going to play in the box and 3-4 bear. It's always going to be this position. You can see right there to stock strong safety. I'm going to go ahead and sub in Averett. I don't know if he was a free safety or a strong safety. He's actually a corner. But keep in mind with this 3-4 bear, since that is still technically a secondary position right there, you're not subbing in a safety at linebacker or whatever it may be, or a corner at linebacker, or I guess it's really just a safety at linebacker like you could a nickel or any other kind of nickel package, including dime, you're still going to be able to get the animations as DBs. Now, you could switch out, let's just say, man up for lurker, and that will help you get some more picks. Although, in my personal experience, I really haven't seen lurker do all too much. I, I, I just don't really bother it anymore. It's, to me, there's just too much RNG with it. But we're gonna go ahead, if you guys wanna go and put Lurker, you can have Lurker on the strong safety. Sub in your, make sure he is your fastest and your tallest DB on the field or defensive back. Again, to make plays because if they're five foot nine or five foot six, even with Lurker, the odds are if they throw it at you, you're probably not gonna be able to make a play on the ball. So Anthony Averett, Averett, I'm not entirely sure how to say his last name, is five foot 11, not the tallest, but again, he has 93 speed. So that 93 speed kind of makes up for his lack of height. So we're gonna use Anthony Averett. We've got Earl Thomas playing over the top at the free safety position. We got Marlon Humphrey that's gonna be playing the best wide receiver we have. Ideally, if you guys have man up, put him on there. Otherwise, the secondary thing I would say is probably put universal coverage or zoned out when we start putting him into an outside third or maybe even start putting him into deep half, soft squat, whatever the case may be. If you can have high man coverage, high zone coverage, that's gonna be probably your best bet if I'm being completely honest. So we've got these two switched around. We've got Marcus Peters on the outside. Again, pretty good man covering corner, not the best, but he'll do with 91 speed. And as always, outside linebackers, feel free to switch in your middle linebackers if they're faster than your right outside or left outside to outside linebackers. Speed, that's king. As this blitz, this formation is an extremely blitz heavy reliant formation. We're always going to be coming out pinch but go. There's just, there's no question. We've talked about that. And there's reasons why we come out in a pinch but go. We'll talk about that and all these different adjustments as we get into different formations, what we need to be looking for, and all this other good stuff. 3-4 Bear, I'm going to have to say, is probably, arguably, it, well, no question, it is my favorite defense to run, especially against people that like to pass the ball. You almost find me exclusively in 3-4 Bear against Gun Bunch, tight offset tight end, tight flex, or any other kind of compressed formation, including split close. I'm almost always going to run 3-4 Bear against those formations. Now, keeping in mind... This is only, again, a small piece of the pie. We've got a lot more on MaestroMan.com, including Big Dime 146, 3-4 Odd, 
three four even a little bit of nick normal and a little bit of big nickel now that stuff's gonna be rolling out throughout the month of february so if you guys went on getting the defensive guide you're like what the crap there's not much here trust me we're gonna be rolling out i lost everything i don't know what happened i lost 150 gigabytes worth of data for my website and that was pretty much all of it so with the defense luckily i got everything else is uploaded so don't worry for you guys are thinking like oh well crap you don't have anything on your website don't worry don't worry don't worry it's all uploaded already it's just gone from my hard drive it's uploaded good to go so anyways the next time i guess the next video we're going to be talking a little bit about gun bunch i'm going to be going against the west coast offense to focus more so on this that gun bunch because that gun bunch is better than any other gun bunch out on the field we're going to be talking about split close gun bunch a little bit of tight offset and essentially that's going to wrap up this defensive ebook we may talk a little bit about trips tight end and a little bit about spread but not in a whole lot of detail because you don't see a lot of people running that so we're going to stick to the metal with this defensive ebook and give you guys a few pointers and how you can attack other formations as well so drop a like on this video share it with your friends subscribe if you're new and until next time guys we will see you against the infamous west coast gun bunch